<clears throat> Hello, everybody. It's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thanks for joining us here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Coming to you live from Miami Beach. I'm here for an industry event, cruise industry event called Sea Trade. Don't worry, it has no real direct impact on consumers, but I am here to uh, see what the industry is talking about. And I'm here tonight to talk to you about Royal Caribbean. Answer your cruise questions. So let's answer as many Royal Caribbean cruise questions as we can, starting with the most important question, which is how many days until your next Royal Caribbean cruise? Hit your countdown in chat. Let us count down together. My next cruise is coming up soon. Well, soonish, maybe not soon enough. Uh, but next month, I'll be on Freedom of the Seas. Can't wait for that. We had a lot of awesome Super Chats before the broadcast began because you guys are amazing. Deputy, get some. Thanks for the Super Chat. As always, 13 days until we spend 14 nights on Odyssey for a transatlantic first time in junior suite. Question, how can we take advantage of the dining package for breakfast? You can't. There's no breakfast option. So it's lunch and dinner only, dude. Um, so for breakfast, do whatever you like to do. But there are no specialty options for breakfast that I'm aware of. So... Um, you said UDP, you meant the dining package, not the drink package, right? If it's a drink package, then you're talking about obviously, um, um, uh, coffees and bloody Mary's, things like that. But I think you mean the dining package. So yeah, don't worry on a 14 night cruise, you're going to get your money's worth out of the dining package. I am sure. Uh, Fernando, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for that. Uh, your message. I disagree with your take on the key. When we arrived on our cruise in 2022 on Harmony, there were already hundreds of people waiting to get into the terminal, but we were able to bypass all of them. Fernando, thank you for the super chat. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I mean, obviously, I'm not saying you're right or wrong because it's just it's just my opinion on the key. I would venture to say that things in 2022, in terms of the dynamics of the embarkation process and a variety of other things, were fundamentally different um, then than they are now, which is it's not that long ago, obviously, but a lot 2022 is still coming out of the uh, out of um covid and protocols were different than they are now so i'm willing I, I really believe that if you did the key again you would see it my way but um that is totally fine if you don't um we're we're, we're here that's but that's the fun thing about this is we get to debate it and i get to tell you guys why uh, i'm right <laughs> desiree hall thank you for the super chat appreciate it chris case beer thank you for the super chat thanks for all the great information and positive attitude where is the best place to stay the night before the cruise in Galveston? Um, there's a couple of places to stay. Um, it kind of depends on your budget and what you're looking to do. Um, ideally, I would say you would stay on Galveston Island and you would stay uh, in the Strand neighborhood, S-T-R-A-N-D. There's a lot of great hotels over there. It's near the cruise terminal. There's a lot to do in terms of dining and entertainment. Um, I would say that's like your probably top choice. Some people do stay at the Seawall in Galveston. Seawall is another area. Um, it looks like A1A in Florida, or kind of in Rococo Beach, that area. If you're going to go swimming in the ocean, that's a good choice. But I think for most people, they don't do that because they're about to go on a cruise in which they're going to do all that. Um, if you wanted to save money, you could stay in either Houston or League City, Texas City. Um, personally, I would rather just stay on Galveston. So that way, there's no concerns about the bridge and traffic and everything like that. Um, that's that's my take on that. Uh, Josh Albertson, thank you for the super chat. What is the best place to get salmon in Sitka? Dude, we had some amazing salmon. We did a real Caribbean tour, and it was a tour. It was so good. I don't remember the name. Um, it was a tour that we did. Hold on. I did a live blog about it. So this is this is back when I still did live blogs. Um, we had salmon that was amazing. The guy brought out this fresh piece of salmon that was just caught. He had to fillet it on the spot. It was so good. Uh, Sitka live blog. Um let me see if I wrote down in the excur in the live blog. This is Jetta's. Jetta's not going to help me on this one. Uh, no, that's Alley. That doesn't help me. Where's mine? Serenade. Okay, I found it. Um, this is booked through Royal Caribbean. Let me see if I can find the excursion name in here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, the excursion tour was called Taste of Sitka. So not a very original name, um, but we had to, that was really good. Now there are plenty of other places I am sure that you can get really really good um salmon as well it's hard to go wrong but um that place was excellent uh nicole lombardi thank you for the super chat me and my mom book you utopia for april 2026 first time on an oasis class ship nice and 
You have a whole year to look forward to it. I love that. Uh, and the aforementioned mom, Michelle Taylor, thank you for the super chat. Utopia of the Seas, anxious to find out about the railway restaurant. Yeah, so the railway restaurant is the new um, interactive, uh, I don't know, interactive story, mixed, re mixed reality restaurant coming to Utopia of the Seas. Um, we posted a preview of it at Real Caribbean Blog months ago when Real Caribbean was prototyping it. It looks really neat. It's going to make you feel like you're actually on a moving train in the Old West. I really can't wait to try it out myself. So we'll have a lot of coverage of that when it comes out for sure. Uh, all right, we're finally up to the super chats here that made uh, the screen. Gee whiz, thank you for the super chat. First time on a Royal Caribbean, second cruise ever. Going with a 10, 8, and 5-year-old on Utopia at the end of July. Any advice for NASA with those ages? Um, get a resort day pass. Go to uh, resortforaday.com. Find a spot over there. It's a great option for them. Two, Coco Key Cabana's worthwhile. I think so. I love it. I've got kids. Um, they're not cheap necessarily, although it does depend on your cruise. We're seeing some, guys, like some, there are some really variations in pricing. As an example, and this is not, this is not the norm, but for my Freedom of the Seas, May 20th cruise, there's overwater cabanas for $900. It's insane because on other cruises, it's like $4,000. Anyway, um, depending on the price, if you got a good one, yeah, I think it's absolutely worthwhile. I love those uh, quite a bit. And uh, your help on WD Today a decade ago was helpful with my then newborn. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're still around, you whiz, and uh, still sticking around and making the jump over to cruising. Love that. Jay Osteen. Jay, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Sifu, Matt, I don't know what that means, but thank you. At the Tampa airport, at the Tampa port terminal, it costs $20 a day. If your cruise is nine days, nine nights, do you pay for the 10th day when you get back? It's valued at $20. Usually when you go there, they say, okay, your cruise is like, you're here for the duration of your cruise. Like it's already preset. It's not like they don't calculate it. They're just like, oh, you're out here on this trip. All right. It's going to be this amount of money. Um, and I don't recall if it, how the breakdown goes, but I want to say it's per night because they say, oh, you're on a four night cruise. Here's how it goes. It is valued with $20. Jay, it is the best $20 you've ever spent. Yes, worth every penny of it. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of friends in our, in our chat. Shoshana, Shoshana is here. Tony is here. Matt Hintz from MEI Travel is here. Hello, Matt. It is good to see you. Pascal, one of our moderators, is here. Sharon Stockman, hello. Good to see all of you guys. What is going on? Ray and Nancy, thank you for the super chat. My wife and I are both Diamond Plus, with the BOGO especially dining. Do you only get one night or do we each get a BOGO dinner? The answer is you both get one. So obviously for the two of you, um, it would it would basically you get two nights. So like the first night, uh, Ray, you would pay for it. You like you'd be free and Nancy would cost money. And then the second night would be the opposite. But yeah, you both get that uh, the benefits. The Crown and Anchor benefits are each given per person. So you get all the benefits times, well, in your case, two. Uh, let's see here. Next question is from a lot of great countdowns here i love that kendrick any news on the seventh of waste class ship no nothing to report yet i suspect utopia guys is gonna be the next big push here marketing wise so don't expect anything about the seventh of waste class ship until like you know two years from now something like that so uh you're going on icon tomorrow good luck sleeping tonight susan westfall thank you for the super chat what's a good hotel for fort lauderdale cruise the, this is my favorite hotel susan in all south florida it's the Marriott Fort Lauderdale Airport. Um, it's a brand new hotel, well, relatively brand new. It opened right in the uh, when cruising restarted. I believe it opened in 2021 or 2022. Um, Marriott Fort Lauderdale Airport. I stay there all the time. I love that hotel. It's a great hotel. You'll love it. It's got the Matt seal of approval on that one. Um, let's see here. Next question. Rich O from MEI Travel is here. Hello. Ke Kelly Scalar from MEI Travel is here as well. Good to see you guys here. Uh, next question. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Kimberly wants to know, do prices on advanced booked cruises over a year typically come down? Great question. And the answer is sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, Kimberly, I'm going to change your question. I want you to ask me instead, Matt, why should I book my cruise more than a year out is there really an advantage the answer is yes especially kimberly if you live in the us or canada other countries too but us or canada are primarily the countries that allow this what i'm about to tell you and second of all um you're probably from there given that it's what time it is of the day we don't usually get a lot of europeans on at night anyway my point of this is that if you are a us citizen or a canadian citizen you can reprice your cruise all the way up until final payment date 
So by booking your cruise early, more than a year in advance, you lock in the price. And then if you're travel, if you're travel agent, you find a better price, you know, anywhere between now and final payment date, you can always reprice and take advantage of that price decrease. And this is the best number one strategy that I can recommend to save money on. Is I've saved more money with this strategy than any other strategy out there. And it's also why it's really important, Kimberly, to work with a good travel agent. I have heard, to be fair, I've heard from folks say, Matt, I heard what you said about booking early and repricing, but I booked directly with the cruise line or I booked with some website and they won't let me do it. Guys, all I can tell you is that a good travel agency will do it. Um, and you can ask Matt Hintz or Kelly Scalar or Rich Owen here. They absolutely can do that for you. So keep all that in mind. Uh, next question is from Diamond Dave Grossi. Diamond Dave, good to see you, buddy. Welcome back. Uh, have you considered doing a video tour and video review of the excursions you recommend, especially Paradise Beach and Maya Chan and Costa Maya? I think it would be great. Um, yes, here's the pro Can I be honest with you guys? This is more of a business. We, do, Dave, to be clear, we have articles about this over at royalgreenblog.com with reviews of all those places. The problem is we generally don't do port specific excursions. Um, not because we don't like them, but because they don't very, they don't perform very well on YouTube. Like nobody watches them because basically people are like, oh, I'm not going to Cozumel. I'm not going to watch that video. Um, it's an unfortunate truth of YouTube. Um, and we try to balance like what will people want to watch the most of. Um, but that's why I also do. That's why we also do the article reviews so you can read those things. So we do have them in there. Could we do, you know, more of a like roundup kind of thing? Sure. Um, but in general, and I think we have done, I'd have to check the archives. I think we, I don't, I don't know about Paradise, but I'm pretty sure we've done something about Maya Chan. But anyway, um, it, it's definitely something we, we, we constantly revisit, though, as an idea. So thank you for the suggestion. Uh, Tom, it's actually, it's happening on Wednesday, not today. Today, I'm just here to, uh, I'm just here to, to, look, you all can see, I am, I'm legit, guys. It's in, it's in aerial font. You know it's legit. Speaker media. So, uh, no, I'm, I was just, I went to one session today, and then there's uh, a couple of different sessions going on the next couple of days there. So, hey, Shoshana, thank you for the super chat. Uh, while, inter while international need to be able to call locals in multiple countries before or after cruises also need data, what should I do? eSIM plus something, physical SIM card? Um, so is your question like on the cruise ship or off the ship? Because what I would tell you is you don't, I wouldn't get a SIM card at all. The problem with the SIM card, especially in the Caribbean, is that none of the cell phone providers work um, with any, like when you're in Mexico, that cell phone company is completely different than the one that's going to be in Jamaica or the Bahamas or what have you. My advice to you is to do, I think, what you already know, which is don't book anything. Enable Wi-Fi calling on your phone right now at home. And then when you get to your cruise ship, you can use Wi-Fi calling to place your calls. And if you're saying, well, Matt, I want to be able to make phone calls when I'm in Cozumel or I'm in wherever these places you're going. Um, most excursions, not, not in the bus, but if you're going to a place, if you're going to a paradise beach, if you're going to a, uh, a hotel, a resort for a day, Wi-Fi is pretty rampant. Pr free Wi-Fi is pretty available and that will work in that situation. So really the only times you wouldn't be able to use Wi-Fi calling would be like when you're on a bus on a sh on a shore excursion going from point a to point b that kind of stuff so if that's your if that's your question shoshana i wouldn't get a sim card sim cards are really good in europe and they're obviously really good if you're staying in one country for a long time right if you're just like hey i'm gonna go spend you're coming to the u.s i'm gonna spend a week in the u.s sure but you know you're gonna go to the airport in the united states airports have free wi-fi um you're gonna go to a restaurant like any decent restaurant has free Wi-Fi, probably. I'm going to guess. Um, so that's kind of why I don't think you need an eSIM card. Never mind the, the convoluted process you're going to need of going from, you know, uh, uh, country to country and that kind of thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Calvin, what shows do you recommend going on Symphony of the Seas? All of them, dude. Any of the shows in the, uh, in the, in the Royal Theater, in the Ice Skating Rink, Studio B, and then the Aqua Theater are absolutely worth seeing every single time. Ronnie Bickers Jr. Ronnie, thank you for the super chat, buddy. 19 days till Mariner of the Seas. I'm wondering, are there any major cruise lines that have itineraries to the Great Lakes? No. The only line that I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll defer here to our MEI travel friends. 
I think a uh, Viking has, or is going to have something, but the great lakes are pretty much relegated to like really small vessels and not certainly not any of the major cruise lines. I seem to recall reading something about Viking, uh, like Viking river cruises wanting to do something there. I don't know if that actually happened or not, but no, none of the major lines, um, did that. As for a, uh, have ever been on a river cruise before? I have not. Um, my experience in Europe is very limited, and I've not done one in the U.S. During the pandemic, Ronnie, when there was no cruise, I was so desperate for a cruise that I actually looked at booking a river cruise. And then I saw the price, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, it, it's insanely expensive for a U.S. river cruise. I'd love to, at some point, we'll do one in Europe, but uh, I'm not doing one uh, currently. Jay Wanderman, working on Broadway show info. Jay, I'm looking forward to seeing the facts uh, about which shows are available. Jeff Burns is here. Hello, Jeff. Good to see you. Uh, William Mom, William, thank you for the super chat. 167 days till Harmony. Thanks for all our help. You are very welcome, my friend. So glad to see you here. Thank you as always for your generosity. Uh, Derek is saying hello from Freedom All Eating Hibachi. Oh, I'm so jealous. I had I had uh, dinner tonight with Don and Heidi who run Eat Sleep Cruise. We had a, it was a fabulous meal, but it was not as good as your meal, my friend. I am jealous. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Uh, I just got off the Apex and enjoyed it, but I did miss the options Royal Hermes large ships offer. They really do it right, and that's kind of my fifteen word review of Celebrity Apex as well. Great time, great ship. Great experience, but there is that little je ne sais quoi missing from there. No doubt about it. Uh, next question is from Andrew Mouseman Hall. Andrew, thank you for the Super Chat. 33 days till Icon. Day one launch on Icon, would you go to Aquanel Market or the Grove Buffet? We have a Sunset Corner Suite. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to tell you, and this might be controversial. I'm going to tell you Aquanel Marketplace. And why am I saying Aquanel Market? Okay. When you get on the ship, you're kind of going all around, you're doing your thing. I'm assuming that as the cruise goes on, you'll spend more time up in the in the suite lounge, in the suite, sun, suite deck, that is, suite neighborhood. So you're more likely to spend more time up there later in the cruise, but day one, you're all over the place. So while you're in the neighborhood, so to speak, uh, go stay, uh, I would do Aquadome Market on day one. Plus it's also really good, and I think food is better at Aquadome Market anyway. Um, so that's why I would lean in that direction. Uh, Lynette, Lynette Ann just booked with Kelly from MEI Travel. Awesome, love that. Two questions, favorite breakfast on Wonder. Um, Solarium Bistro, probably, or Park Cafe. Best spot of Coca-Cola with a toddler? Oh, that's easy, that's um, uh, uh, Splash Away Bay. Splash Away Bay, uh, Lynette, bring, bring a book, bring your phone, because you ain't, your, your, your toddler is going to be off to the races over there, uh, splashing, and and it's great. Wonderful place, and, and it's included. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Mike, have you done the Bright Line Trip from Orlando? Yes, I actually wrote an article about this uh, earlier today at royalcardianblog.com. But I've done it, Mike, I've done the train like a dozen times now. It's fantastic. I love it. It's the only way to do it. So, really, really good. Uh, Jason B. Jason, thank you for the super chat. Thir 237 days to wonder. How do you rate the food on wonder? Awesome. When Jerry main dining room and which restaurant is your favorite? In my experience, ship, ship food varies. And ship food does vary. But Jason, you should know that when you ask, I'm not, I'm not berating your question, obviously. But when you say, how do you rate the food on wonder? I mean, you know, there, there, every, every restaurant has hits and hits, hits and misses, right? Every restaurant has a couple things that are fantastic. Most of the food is right there in the good to very good. And maybe there's one or two things that you're like, well, I'm not going to order that again. I wouldn't recommend that, right? That is pretty much true of everything that you're talking about there. So I don't like to paint with broad, broad strokes and be like, oh, guys, this ship's food is bad. Or this, like, I, I would never do that. I think that's a, doing a disservice to you all in the sense that palettes are, are, are going to be different. I, I often share this example, Jason. Broccoli, like in the chat. Guys, do you love or hate broccoli? Type love or hate if you love or hate broccoli. And you're going to see in the chat, like half of you guys like broccoli and half of you guys hate broccoli, right? So if there's food that has broccoli in it, half of you are going to be like, this is the worst thing ever. I would never eat that. And the other half will be like, this is the best food ever, right? You kind of get, I'm just trying to prove, just show, demonstrate rather that, you know, food is very subjective. 
Um, but I, in terms of Windjammer, Main Dining Room, and which restaurant is my favorite, I mean, 150 Central Park, Mason Jar, um, Izumi, of course, I absolutely love. But those there, there's great things about all those restaurants. So don't short change. Try them all. That's really and truly my best recommendation to you. You'll, you'll gravitate towards some for sure. Or one or the other, I should say. Uh, Christopher, thank you for the super chat. Um, oh, sh- let me hold on. Christopher, hold on a thought for a second. I'm going to get to your question in a second. Uh, off the ship, Shoshana, going back to your Wi-Fi question. Yeah, I mean, when are you off the ship? Because like I said, if you're doing tours that go somewhere, a beach, uh, a hotel, you'll be within contact. I mean, yeah, if you're going to do like a Mayan ruins tour, there's no Wi-Fi connection at Chachacabin ruins or whatever. I get that. But it's a pretty limited amount of time that that's you'll be out of contact. Like unless you've got like something so mission critical, so like you like I, I you I don't think you need. I think the I think it'd be a waste of your money. And Shoshana, I'm telling you this from experience. I used to travel around with a travel router with bah- Bohemian and St. Martin SIM cards in there. And it's just, it's not worth it because they don't really offer packages that are conducive financially for being there for the day. You'd be paying for like a month. Um, I'm telling you, it's just, it's not cost effective. Rely on the free Wi-Fi. I think it'll be okay. All right, Christopher, time for your question now, uh, which of course I don't see. If I was Christopher Thomas, where would my question be? Hold on. We're going to find a Christopher. Unless you don't have one. Sometimes people just give me super chats because they're super nice. I can't find it. But I will keep an eye out for it. Christopher, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Uh, can you please explain the group excursion process? Essentially, on a very basic level, um, your ticket will tell you to report to a place. More often than not, it's the theater of your ship. On some port stops, you'll report to a place uh, on the pier. It just depends on where you are. But basically, you report to a spot, and you check in, and you give them your ticket, and then they say, okay, go wait over here. Everybody gets, then they wait for everybody to show up, and then they escort you on your tour, and that's kind of the very, very basics of it. Uh, Let's see here. Next question. Hey, Kevin Bailey re-upping for being a Royal Caribbean blog member. Royal Caribbean Royal Caribbean blog club member. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, two months. Nice, dude. Six days to the Oasis. Super excited. Driving down from South Tampa Saturday. Is portside barbecue included with the specialty dining packages? It is indeed. You'll get to go there once a day per person with that. So you go there every day just once per day. And yeah, you get a stipend in order to eat there. Do I think um, Wonder doing three and four nighters sailing on Miami is more of a permanent thing we're going to be doing or more of a testing the waters? Um, I mean, per- I know what your question is. I guess how permanent do you mean by permanent? Do I think they're doing it for a while? Yes. Um, remember what this is not just wonder, right? Allure has already been doing this three and four night runs, Oasis class ship at a Port Canaveral. And then Utopia will be doing that to replace Allure when she debuts later this summer. This is part of a, stra- a, a concerted effort. It's a strategy to, uh, go after first time cruisers to be able to offer them. If you want to do a short cruise because you're a first time cruiser and you didn't listen to Matt and you booked a three night cruise, well, instead of booking a three night cruise on an old ratty ship, we're going to give you like one of the best ones out there. And that's essentially their idea, if that makes sense. So, do I think it's going to be permanent? I think it's going to be happening for at least a couple of years. Yeah. I mean, I would say three to four years minimum before they would consider. Now, that being said, Logan. Eventually, Wonder will be doing something else. We see this every ship, every itinerary. Eventually, ships move on to new itineraries. There's n- there is never a ship that does the same itinerary in perpetuity, like forever. Even not even like five years is pretty rare. Now that that's still a long way to wait, you know. But uh, might be a while before you get to go on Wonder for a longer sailing. But yeah, I think that's going to be the case for a while there. I'm gonna drink of water here. Uh, Jason says, Royal Caribbean needs to improve food quality. See, that's a very blanket statement. That's like me saying, um, I want to be fair with this and not be like something really generic. I mean, what do you mean by that? Like, first of all, what food? 
Second of all, which restaurant? Third of all, what quality do you think it should be? Because Royal Caribbean ships are not, you know, uh, Ruth Chris steakhouses, if that's what you're expecting. Um, I don't know what the expectation level is there, but you need to be more specific with, like, what is the issue exactly? I mean, look, I get it that some people would prefer food to be a different thing. And, and food changes. Food evolves. It has been evolving over time. And there are some things the Royal Caribbean has changed food-wise that I like. And some things they've changed food-wise I did not like. But overall, I like the direction that they're going in a lot of these with a lot of these dishes that are out there. Um, so again, you got to be a little more, that, that's a really, it's a really blanket statement to make, but I'm not sure what you mean by that specifically, because again, also depends on what your expectations are. I think, I'm not saying it's this is you. Some people I do believe have unrealistic expectations about what cruise ship food should be um, for a mass market cruise line, you know, but that's just my opinion on is it the same updates? No way. Same thumbnails last week. If that is true, that is unacceptable. I swear to God, I changed it. I, I could have sworn I changed it. And if I didn't, that's on me, dude. I apologize. Rick, thank you for the super chat. My wife and I are going to Miami around 9.30 a.m. on Friday before Icon of the Seas group cruise. Any recommendations for a hotel in Miami since we'll be there early? Wait, 9.30 on Friday. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Um, Yes, Um, there's a couple different hotels I recommend. The Intercontinental Miami, although that might be sold out at this point. The Double Tree Biscayne Bay, uh, Double Tree, uh, sorry, Double Tree Biscayne Bay, and the Marriott Biscayne Bay. Um, you could it also depends on what you want to do, Rick. Like I'm saying, in South Beach here in Miami Beach, there are a lot of great hotels. The Surfcomer Hotel is a fantastic hotel um, over here. The Fontaine Blue kind of depends on what you want to do pre cruise, but the uh, the Marriott Biscayne Bay is pretty darn good. Um, in general. So hopefully that answers your question. And since you're going to be there around for the day, you're not just flying in for the night before, I would recommend a hotel uh, in the Brickell neighborhood would be really good. But the ones in like the, the first three I rattled off to, the Intercontinental, um, the, the two Biscayne Bay hotels, those are located in good locations you can easily get around. Uh, where can I find out the shows on Freedom of the Seas? Look up uh, the cruise a past cruise compass from Freedom of the Seas, we have an archive of them at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Viking sales Great Lakes, and it's expensive. Dude, I mean, it, it's it's insanely expensive. Yeah. Like, yeah. Woo. Uh, Diamond Dave, again with a super chat. Thank you again. Matt, you'll like this. It fits right into what you were saying. I have repriced my Odyssey of the Seas Mediterranean cruise six times since February through my travel agent. Worked flawlessly. There you go. Thank you for, for proving my point there. Love it. Hey, Chantel. I see us, Chantel. One of our moderators, writers, awesome person as, as well. Uh, anything new about the Discovery Collapse? No, my friend. Otherwise, I would definitely have written about it. But I think, honestly, Steve, between you and me, I think we'll if, if we hear anything in the year of 2024, it'll be like towards the end of the year. Because I think Michael Bailey, when he hinted that it's going to be by the end of the year, I think you're talking about like November, December timeline. Like, not now, quite frankly. Uh, Dan Wanderman from MEI trip, my favorite Wanderman who's not named Jay. Sorry, Adam. Uh, hope you're doing well, Dan. Hope all is well. Hope Shane Oosh and the dogs are doing well. We miss you guys. We, we got to get together again. Uh, is it too late to book for the first week of July now book, or booking next week? I would say this. You should book. Definitely don't wait. Book it now. Lock in. Call Dan at MEI travel. I don't know if you actually can call Dan. Probably have to email him, but Book it now. Lock in the price. Yeah, definitely the way to go right there. Uh, let's see here. Mariah, my fiance and I have an upcoming sailing 11 days. Sailing is fully booked. We apply for Royal Up Junior Speed and Grand Speed. Is it possible to get our bid? Probably not. Um, I would say in general, chances of Royal Ups are pretty low. Number two, chances of getting Royal Up in a suite are extremely low. But you never know. But I wouldn't hold. If I were you, Mariah, I would not hold my breath for that one, quite frankly. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Uh, David Christie, thank you for the super chat. 164 days to Utopia. Any word on entertainment they'll be providing? Unfortunately not, David. Um, let's see here. So we're in April. The ship launches in July. So let's back this up here. Uh, June. I mean, I would say we're probably, David, in the next... 
I think, well, <laughs> before July 4th. Okay, that's not much of a prediction. I would say we'll probably start getting those, that information hopefully soon, in the next 30 days, I would hope. But I really don't know. Um, it, it, you never know with these kinds of things there. Is Crown's Edge on Icon worth the price? I mean, I didn't do it, um, but my staff did, um, both Jenna and Angie. And I think they would tell you probably not. It's it's a very pricey thing to do, but you know, hey, if you I mean, it's cool and it's fun, but it's pretty pricey. I see all the broccoli haters in the chat. Let me just say you, I see you broccoli haters. Broccoli, let me tell you something. I tell them my kids all broccoli, like raw broccoli, like you know, you're at a you're at a you're at a football party, a game, and someone's got like a, a platter and it's like raw broccoli. That's gross. I don't care how much ranch dressing you put on that. That is straight up gross. But uh cooked broccoli like steamed or boiled that is mwah, like like dude if you don't like broccoli order next time you go to a chinese restaurant and get chicken and broccoli that is going to change your life it's so good ronnie bickers jr again dude this is your third or fourth super chat thank you my friend as a southerner i've heard the real sweet tea is impossible to come by on cruise in general are there any options for real sweet tea what about the mason jar i think the mason jar is pretty much all you got i'm going to defer though sharon stockman is in the chat Sharon, can you help? You, I'm going to defer to you. Sharon's from Alabama. She is my go-to gal on Southern everything. So I'll, whatever she says goes, because you're asking a, a, a Yankee here. So I have no clue. Uh, Chris Stell, thank you for the super chat. 283 days till eating broccoli on a back-to-back -back on Independence. I love it. Russell, is a cruise the safest vacation I can take by myself as a young solo traveler? It's certainly safe. Um, like any travel, Russell, there are risks. So I wouldn't, it'd be, I would be remiss if I sat here and told you there are not risks involved with any travel, including cruise ships. Something could happen to you, right? There, I mean, this is just the, I mean, you know, you could slip and fall in your bathtub, right? And, and die. I mean, that could happen at home. It could happen on a cruise ship. Um, bad things can happen anywhere. So I don't want to, I'm not here to tell you that you're totally safe. Do I think it's a reasonably safe type of vacation? Yeah. Do I think it's safer than maybe going by yourself to a major city somewhere and going about it that way, there's a good argument that I would say, yeah, it is safer that way. Um, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to like try to sugarcoat it or um, whitewash the realities of the world. But I do think in the grand scheme of things, and as someone who has taken many cruises by himself, yeah, I do think it's a reasonably safe and fun um, a way to travel for sure as a solo cruiser. Uh, let's see here. Next question is from, uh, Brianne going on symphony of the seas. Do you think a casita is worth it on a sea day? <sighs> you know, you guys know, I love a lot of these extras that Royal Caribbean offers. Cabanas, Coco Key. Yes. Um, the owner's box, you know, um, at, um, uh, at Playmakers, well, I'm not sure I get a solid yes, but I liked it. I mean, there are certain things I think are worth money. The problem with the casitas are, I feel like, number one, and you're going on Symphony. If I'm not mistaken, they're all up on the upper pool deck, and the pool is on the lower pool deck. I don't know. I And the other problem with the casitas is the shade, or lack thereof, because depending on where the sun is, the shade may end up, you may not be in the shade even though you have a roof. That's a problem or not. I would say in jet, I would rather, in the case of the casitas, I would say, no, not worth it. Save your money. Spend it somewhere else. Not that it's a bad idea. It's not like there's like good ideas, meh ideas, and bad ideas for how to spend your money. Casitas are in the meh category for me. Cabanas, good. The key, bad. Casitas, meh. Hope that makes sense. Uh, Naughty Towel Animal. I love the name. Thank you for the super chat. Royal Caribbean doesn't go to Glacier Bay. Dawes, Endicott, Armour, Harbor, Glacier, which is a can't miss. I mean, dude, if you can, Glacier Bay. And I don't believe Royal Caribbean goes to Glacier Bay, right? Or am I thinking of a different one? Glacier Bay is the best of those choices. I would say Glacier Bay, number one. Hubbard, Glacier, number two. Dawes, uh, Glacier, number three. So, um, every time, this is so silly. And guys... No one should laugh at this. When I was in high school, we were learning about the Dawes Act. It's spelled the same way, D-A-W-E. I don't remember what the Dawes Act is. But for some reason, and still to this day, every single time I read Dawes Glacier, I think of this, we joked, 
where are my dogs act? Which is a play on where are my dogs at? But you can say, where's my dogs act? I hope that also brings you countless decades of eh, type reactions because it does every single time to me. Where are my dogs act? Recommendations for Sitka and Ketchikan. Um, for Sitka, um, the downtown area is really pretty. Um, there's old Russian history there. It's really neat. Check it out. I've not been to Ketchikan yet, unfortunately. It's on my to-do list. Maybe someone in our chat can recommend something. Uh, William Ryman. William, thank you for the super chat. Does Port Canaveral have EV charging? I believe that they're going to be adding it as part of a new parking expansion, but it's not there yet, so no. Uh, am I accepting Taylor Swift dad jokes this week? That was a one-time only... Please save them for the next time Gabby's on here. I don't care about them, so no. But that was fun last week. I'm glad you enjoyed that as well. Um, Chief Trash. My fans that have our honeymoon on freedom, we are wondering with Haiti as a current stop, what are Royal Caribbean's plans? Wait and see. Yeah, basically, Royal Caribbean right now is not stopping there. Um, they basically canceled all Labadee stops through about the end of May at this point. So um, there's nothing you can do other than just wait and see. But I suspect you'll... When are you going? You didn't say. But you never know. It's hard to it's hard to tell. But at this point, they are still, uh, you know, waiting and seeing. Hey, Mark Applebaum became a Royal Blood Club member. Mark, thank you for becoming a club member, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the best. Appreciate you. Uh, is Icon of the Seas overrated? No. I mean, I agree. I agree with Johnny here. It is. It's underrated, dude. It will change your life. What is the best part about Hideaway Beach? um the pool the heated pool and the food but heated pool by far yeah uh do i spend the money on the wi-fi package yeah absolutely you got to be able to message tony diaz and remind him you're on a cruise and he's not uh is a passport required to visit nasa and cookie from port canaveral if you're a u.s citizen christine and your cruise is a closed loop sailing then no you don't you could travel with a um um with a uh, driver's license and an original birth certificate Uh, let's see here. Next question. Sean Dubit. Sean, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Seven days still freedom. So except for our hideout cabana, dude, you're going to love that. What was your favorite food in the hideaway area? The pizza, uh, the bar, the Caribbean chick guava chicken pizza, dude, that is mwah, like, that is so good, dude. Really, really good. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Next question. Uh, Kevin, have I cruised on any celebrity cruise? Yes, I've cruised on Celebrity Apex and Celebrity Ascent. So I've only done the Apex, the Edge Clash ships at this point. Um, and those are really good. I enjoyed them both. Very fun. Um, and I did book, hold on a second, I did book a Celebrity Cruise um, in September on Silhouette, I think. It's whatever one's going to Coco Key on a three-nighter. I booked that one. Uh, next question... Do, 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 do. <laughs> Love it when Matt calls me dude. Dude, here's the reality. You know what's, I feel like, first of all, you know what's funny, Pascal? Like the current generation, my kids, they have, I don't think I've ever heard my kids use the word dude. It's, I think dude is to them as groovy was to me um, when I was growing up. Like who the heck would say groovy? What are you from like, you know, 30 years ago? Like, yeah, like nobody, nobody under the age of 40, I'm gonna guess now, says the word says dude, um, instead of like now it's bruh, bruh, which I don't hate actually. I kind of get used to it. Uh next question. Uh Pam, do you know when New Beach and NASA will be ready for row? They don't have an official date yet, sometime next year, but um not in 21 days, so. Don't worry about that. Sometime next year. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Ronnie, again, dude, with like your 18th super chat today. Thank you, Ronnie. Shout out to the best travel agent, Kelly Scalar. Kelly is in the chat. And Kelly, you rock. So it's official now. Uh, Holy Ozone. Hello from Wonder of the Seas. I had such a great cruise on Wonder of the Seas when I was on here a couple weeks ago. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, Richard says they were testing an Effectors prequel on a recent Icon Cruise. I can see it becoming the main theater show on Utopia. Awesome. Hope it's really good. I gotta be honest with you guys. I liked Effectors 1. I didn't love Effectors 2. I thought it was too repetitive. I thought it was too similar to Effectors 1. 
but um, but I'm, I'm hoping for the best on that one. Royal bro Broccoli Blog. I don't love broccoli quite that much, but yeah. <laughs> you had General Tso's. You told them no broccoli? Dude, General Tso's sauce with almost anything is super edible. And with broccoli, that being said, Oliver, you know what? I'm going to give you a pass on this one. I, I can see your way to this one because usually the broccoli is not submerged in the sauce. Chicken and broccoli, that broccoli is the broccoli. If you don't like broccoli or you never had broccoli or whatever, chicken and broccoli from Chinese food is the best broccoli to try. It is so good. <laughs> By the way, I have this exact fight with my kids every time and they never listen to me. So that's my kids. Maybe you guys are a little more rational, perhaps. Um, Rick, what are you allowed to bring back on board of ports of call? Sealed food or sealed non-alcoholic drinks? If you, you can bring alcoholic drinks, obviously they'll confiscate it and they'll give it back to you in the cruise. Um, sealed food, yes. Like people bring, as an example, um, in, in, in the Dutch uh, islands of like St. Martin or Aruba, people will bring back cheese, but it's got to be the sealed, like the, the cheese wheel, not like, hey, here's a slice of cheese to bring back. That's totally fine. You want to bring back, um, we used to bring back like Stroop waffles. That's totally, like as long as it's packaged, they really don't care. Uh, rum cake from the Bahamas, they don't care. You can't bring a slice of pizza back on board. So that's basically it. But yeah, as long as it's sealed, generally speaking, they don't care. Uh, Lauren, the legend, Lisco. Lauren, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Happy Monday. What are your favorite shows and activities on Oasis these days? Aqua 80s, Aqua 80s, and Aqua 80s. I mean, that's, that's my favorite. I love Aqua 80s in the Aqua Theater. Uh, it's the best. And, of course, I mean, yeah, there's there's cats. The if you Listen, there's a lot of strong – you thought there were strong opinions about broccoli. Wait until people start talking about cats. Um, but there's that. Um, but, yeah, there's going to be some big differences from 10 years ago, Lauren. Um, I would say the, the Lime and Coconut's not a show. It's just a bar. That's a really nice space on there. Spotlight Karaoke. But Aqua 80s, that's got to be your must-see show on board for sure. John Doe. John, thank you for the super chat. Is there a brig on Wonder of the Seas? Yes. If so, how secure are the locks? Are pictures of the locks available online? And no, there's no pictures. Um, depends on the ship, how much of a brig it is. Like, it doesn't necessarily look like Alcatraz. But there are brigs on cruise ships. There are brigs and there are morgues. In the case of the brig... On older ships, they would usually be like almost, think of it like a, 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 a bare bone stateroom that they would use. Um, and in other cases, it uh, maybe on newer ships, it looks more like a quote unquote jail. It's more like a holding cell than anything else. But I have no idea what they look like beyond that because thank God I've never been there and I don't need to see that quite frankly. Uh, no more Dawes joke or dad jokes or my Dawes act. <clears throat> Listen, I didn't say my Dawes act joke was funny. I just remember thinking in high school, it was funny because we were kids and you want to say where my Dawes dogs at. And you can't say that in class. It said, where's my Dawes act. Again, I thought it was funny back in 1999. I'm sorry that, that this joke from history class in 1999 does not hold up to 2024, but uh, where's the best place to service Broccoli and Symphony? Windjammer. Windjammer, because they're going to have probably, um, um, uh, what's it called? Chinese food at some point. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Shoshana, thank you for the super chat. Love these fireside chats with you. If price drops after final payment, can you get onboard credit or is the fun over? The fun is over. After final payment day, you just email your MAI trial and you say, you guys are amazing. Actually, here's the truth. And you should do that anyway. But um, after final payment, don't look at pricing at all. Never, don't look at it again. It's just, there's no point. It is what it is at that point. So yeah, no, there's nothing you can do after final payment. Uh, next question. As many cruisers as you have done, does it ever get boring? Or do you ever cruise that is not the do you ever cruise that is not for the blog? Um, no, because um, these days, well, number one, um, it's a great, it's a great question. I'm not, I'm not poo pooing your question by any means. Um, when we go on a cruise, um, it's it's always gonna be it's it's always gonna be work to me 
Now, that's a bad thing, by the way. I enjoy work. I, when I go to bed and I think about blog stuff, and um, this is why I got into it, right? But um, our company is small enough that I really can't like check out and be like, okay, guys, Matt's going on vacation. Uh, I'll see you all next week. Like, there's there's enough functionality that I need to keep doing. Not that our staff isn't very talented, but we're not at that point yet from a process standpoint for them to be doing that. Number two, and I would say more importantly to your question, when I'm on a cruise, whether it is Royal Caribbean or Celebrity or any other line for that matter, I will always be looking at it through the lens of a blog because that's that's my, that's my job. And it's hard. It's I would imagine it'd be very similar to someone who works in marketing and not watching a television commercial and thinking about that through the lens of marketing. Um, have, I, have, I have done other vacations. I've gone skiing a couple times um, in the last couple of years. And while I have updated the blog, I posted articles from the chairlift. Um, that's probably the closest I get. Um, we're doing a summer trip this year um, up to the Northeast and we're just hanging out and chilling out in places like Saratoga and Connecticut. And I'll be doing, I'll be work, I'll be doing my day job from there, but that'll be again, the closest I get to really checking out, but I'm still checked in by, by a lot. So <coughs> Parker's a freshman in high school. You guys say, dude, really? I listen, Parker more. I think it's about, I mean, I think dude is better than bruh, but yeah, glad to hear that. Uh, let's see here. Groovy, man. It's radical. Gosh, that, that, I, <laughs> Matt Most, thank you for the super chat. I just got an icon on Saturday. Thanks, Matt, for all the, the videos. We took advantage of all your advice. Awesome. So glad to hear you had an awesome time. Thank you for the super chat. Did you, did you love the ship? Cause I mean, I love, love icon. <laughs> Uh, do you have an Emmy and I travel contact info? Dimitri, all you have to do is go to royalcaribbeanblog.com. There's a big yellow form right there on the homepage. Fill that out. They'll contact you. Although, uh, Kelly and Matt and, uh, Rich O are in the chat right now and they can reach out to you, but honestly, fill out the blog, fill, fill out the form on royalcaribbeanblog.com. It's just way easier and probably faster anyway for, for both of you guys. New and old Funko Pop unboxes. Thank you for the super chat. We'd love to go to Antarctica. Why does Royal Caribbean sister company go but there? Royal Caribbean doesn't. Um, number one, ship size. Royal Celebrity has smaller ships. Uh, number two, just demand and logistics involved. There's a lot of logistics involved there. Um, we actually new and old Funko Pops. Um, Jenna, who's our YouTube video editor, I think you know that. She went to Antarctica on a very small line called Poseidon Adventure. She went there earlier this year or was it late last year last couple months she went there and we have a there's a video and a full review of it over on cruise.blog our sister site so if you want to check that out that might give you a good idea there but um essentially it's far away and royal Caribbean can make more money um, elsewhere plus their ships are probably too big to go to um antarctica in general so i mean serenade of the seas on her world cruise sailed by it they didn't stop but they saw it so that kind of counts jones mcjones thank you for the super chat thank you for all the great advice traveling on symphony next year and book the cabana at coco key when booking cabana there's a 10 percent upcharge and if this is a prepaid tip uh i'd have to usually the prepaid tip the gratuity usually has a service charge like if you look at the line before you check out with anything like a drink package great example is you will see the line item charge for your for the drink package and you'll see a service charge and the service charge is indeed gratuity. Yes. Uh, that being said, Jones McJones, when I go to a cabana, I still tip the cabana tenant something a little bit extra. Um, I don't take that into consideration, but that is a fair point. Uh, next question. You could have brought the printer to Miami for us. You know, believe it or not, I didn't want to bring it, but I'm sorry that you missed the printer. Anything most fun thing to do on Mariner? Ooh. I mean, the, uh, the the escape room. The escape room is really fun. If you've never done that before, Mariner has a very good escape room. I would recommend that. Jess, how far out is just booking? Any pros of booking two years out? Book to book as early as you can. Two years out is fantastic. Um, book early. Book as early as you can. Work with a good travel agent, and then reprice your cruise up to final payment date. That's my that's my best tips for you. Uh, let's see here. Next question. 
<laughs> my opinion, dad jokes are the best. East Elf bet, and here's why. <laughs> I've not heard that one yet before, so that's the only reason to bring that one up. Uh, skiing? You betrayed us, Matt. You can only cruise no matter no other vacation alternatives. What can I say? Bro. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Deb and Matt chat. Love your channel and insights. Matt, great name, by the way. Likewise. Not Deb, but <laughs> it's a very Deb is a very nice name as well. Nothing against the Debs out there. Uh, let's see here. We have time for a couple more questions, guys. And I gotta go uh run on out of here. Um uh, Pam, we're going to Saratoga. I have no we have not made any plans yet what we're doing. Um, but we're doing something. We are saying Saratoga Springs, though. To I wanted to get far away from Tony Diaz in New York, but yeah. Uh, I'll keep that in mind though. Thank you. Also, Jenna is my new hero. Man, you're going to blow up her ego tomorrow when she's editing the uh, Q&A recap video for our uh, club members. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And going on Utopia of the Seas, first week of April 25. When can we start making reservations for dining in the spa? Um, it depends. There isn't an exact, there is not an exact time when you could start doing it, but keep an eye on it. It'll eventually show up over there. Uh, ben Blue, you are not wrong. Most fun on Mariners hanging out with Bing Bong, Mark Walker. That is absolutely correct. Um, next question, Veronica. Really enjoying, really enjoyed your daughter joining you on live last week. Awesome, so thank you. Loved your lives and blogs. For today's Oasis, nice, fantastic. Jeff Burns, I'll be celebrating a birthday on a group cruise this year. How worried should I be, Jeff? Do you ever look in the mirror and see yourself? Ever done? You ever seen the Jeff Burns? Uh, nervous chuckle. The <laughs> That's exactly what I'm picturing in my head. Uh, what? Listen, just listen. Number one, there will be a birthday hat provided for you by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cooking Yo. And second of all, we'll celebrate with some light festivities, perhaps an evening nightcap to remember the the occasion. But you know, nothing too over the top crazy that might indeed coincide with by the way jeff one of the biggest plans i've ever had for a group cruise that we're about to announce but really truly you should not worry at all you really it wouldn't it's not even worth mentioning at this point love you chet uh let's see here keith bruce are there any special restaurants open on wonder for lunch on port days generally not the only exception, Keith, might be a port in which uh, you have to be back on board very early. Like uh, if you're in St. Thomas and like all the boards like two, sometimes they open up like Playmakers a little early, but generally not. Uh, next question. Jess wants to know, do travel agents add an AM board credit if Roller Cream doesn't offer at the time? They can, yeah. So generally speaking yes there could be onboard credit from a travel agent that is independent of what royal caribbean would offer but it's not always the case uh next question oh jason b did i miss your super chat i'm i'm always behind jason oh i didn't miss it jason sorry hold on jason b how did i miss that this is like that time that Teresa said i missed it and i said no i didn't and then i did miss it Jason B. We're, we're going back. No, I'm going to get to it, guys. Don't worry. I got to use search. Jason B. Oh, well, I missed it, but thank you, Chantel. Uh, differences between World Games Private Island and upcoming beach clubs. So the private islands, Cookie and Labadee, are included in your cruise fare in the sense that you can walk off there. Everybody on the ship can access it. Everybody on the ship can go there with no extra cost and enjoy a beach day, right? Food is included, access to the beach, you get that. The beach clubs are limited capacity. Not everyone on the ship can go there, and they cost extra. So in order to go to the beach club, whether it's going to be in NASA or Cozumel, there's an, it's like a shore excursion, basically. Think of it just like a Royal Caribbean run shore excursion, um, like anything else you would book, if that makes sense. Um, we don't have the full details yet beyond that. I have heard that it's going to be all-inclusive at Nassau. Like, drinks will be included, and there'll be cabanas that cost extra. But uh, that is, uh, that's essentially what I've heard. So, Jason, thank you for the super chat. I apologize 
for missing it. Thank you for uh, alerting me, though, to it. Because obviously, if I miss your super chat, guys, that's pretty important right there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kevin, do you plan on bringing other guests? I agree that adds a special to your broadcast. You know what's funny? As I started this broadcast, I forgot that like I had dinner with Don and Heidi for, from Eat Sleep Cruise. Uh, Sherry from Cruise Tips TV is somewhere lurking around. Not in here, but somewhere in the greater Miami area. Like I, sh- I probably should have. If I had Kevin, if I had half a brain and I had thought about this ahead of time, yes, I should have done that. But generally, I don't love doing lives remotely like where like i'm here and you're somewhere else there's just a little bit of a lag it's not quite the same thing as having someone sitting next to you and doing that so i apologize that we didn't think about this for this one uh were you able to see the solar eclipse of florida i mean we, it was a partial eclipse i didn't see anything i i it started happening and i was like yeah i don't want to like burn my retinas and um i'm gonna go take a nap instead do you recommend booking outside the cruise line in Alaska trying to save money? I look at both, Matt. Um, I would say in Alaska, there are pros and cons to booking with a Reliant or not, but I definitely would not limit yourself to one or the other. I, I always look at both. Sometimes I book through Royal, sometimes I don't. Um, one of the best cruises I ever did in Alaska was in Juneau. We rented a Jeep, and that was through Royal Caribbean, and that was great. So um, I wouldn't limit yourself to one or the other. Uh, hotel recommendations for Italy for a cruise. Well, where in Italy? Venice or... Rome, I don't have any recommendations, but um, you need to be more specific on that because I'm not sure about that. Uh, what bar opens the earliest on Symphony? We have the drink package. Any of the pool bars will be open. The pub should be open, but the pool bars are your go-to spot, almost guaranteed. Um, you're good to go over there. Did I miss another super chat from Lockwood? 19? Where the heck am I missing these? Lockwood, I see you on my panel here, but I don't see you in the chat. Well, Lockwood 1976, or yeah, thank you for the super chat. If I missed it, then I apologize. I, I mean, I did miss it, but yeah. Uh, are the early shows or later shows better for crowds? Flip a coin, it really doesn't matter. There's there's pros and cons. The, you know, it, it, it I don't think it really matters, no. It, it matters more, Skyfrog, if you prefer to have early or late dinner times, more than anything. Because obviously, if you pick an early show, you're having late dinner, and if you're doing the late show, you're probably having early dinner. So that's really the ramification to consider. So, all right, guys, we've run out of time here. I need to get going. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you to all of our super chatters today. Uh, thank you to Lockwood1976, Jason B., Jones McJones, new and old Funko Popping. Fun- oh, geez. I, it's not like your 18th time being here, and I can't say thank you to your name properly. New and old Funko Pop unboxings. Matt, Mose, uh, Shoshana, John Doe, Lauren, Ronnie Vickers, Sean Dubitz, um, Mark Applebaum, thank you for becoming a club member, William Ryman, Naughty Towel Animal, Christelle, Ronnie Vickers again, David Christie, thank you, Diamond Dave Grossi, thank you, Rick Lipitsky, Kevin Bailey, thanks for becoming a club member, uh, and maybe a super chatter, uh, Christopher Thomas, Jason B., uh, I think it was two Jason B. super chats, thank you, Jason. Andrew Massman Hall, William Mom, Ronnie Bickers, Shoshana again, Diamond Dave again, Susan Westfall, uh, Ray and Nancy, Joe, Jay Osteen, G Wiz, Michelle Taylor, Nicole Lombardi, Josh Albertson, Chris Case Beer, Desiree, Fernando, Deputy Get Some. Guys, thank you so much for everything. Really appreciate each and every one of you guys. Next week, we'll be live back here on YouTube, back at home. Until then, guys, have a great rest of your night. Talk again very soon right here on YouTube. <laughs> Bye, everybody.